Hello, it's Mr. Funk again. The objective of this video is to learn how to convert equivalent numbers to between different forms, such as the percent, decimal, fractions, and ratios. All those are different forms. You can have the same number look different because it's expressed as a decimal or expressed as a percent, but still be the same value. We're going to look at fraction to decimal first. To convert a fraction to a decimal, you need to take the top number and divide it by the bottom number. Now we know the top number is the numerator, the bottom number is the denominator. If you have a mixed number, you're going to convert the fraction, just the fraction part, to a decimal, and then you're going to attack the whole number onto the front of that decimal. For example, Here I've got 3 fourths. For this one, it's going to be straightforward 3 divided by 4. Top divided by bottom. Now, when you divide the top by the bottom in your calculator, I'm not asking you to do long division or anything like that. 3 divided by 4, you're going to get 0.75. And that's your answer. Here we've got a mixed number. So we're going to do 3 divided by 8, converting the fraction part only. And 3 divided by 8 is going to give me 0 0.375. You can do that in a calculator. But we have the 7 in front here, so we've got to slap that onto the front of this, which means this becomes 7.375. 7 and 3 eighths, 7 and... 3 points, uh, 0.375, or 7 and 375 thousandths. So that would be our final answer there. If you have a negative in front, that comes in in the end when you move the whole number over, or when you're doing a fraction by itself, it just gets carried along as part of the problem there. So here we have 1 divided by 2, we convert the fraction first, that gives us 0.5. We tack the 2 on in front, so we get 2.5, and it is negative, so the negative comes back in the end here. Now let's take a look at converting percents to decimals. The word percent is actually two Latin words for divide by 100. Per, divide by, cent, 100. Think in terms of cent, century hundred years, divide by a hundred. And that's exactly what you do to convert a percent to a decimal. You divide it by a hundred. So we take the 98, we divide it by 100. And remember, when you're dividing by a hundred, it's the same as moving the decimal point over to the left, one, two place values, so this becomes 0 0.98. Do you need a calculator to do that? I hope not. Moving the bed decimal point over two places, that's the decimal equivalent of 98%. Here, we have 4.5%, and we need to divide that by 100 to convert. Here's the decimal plate, a place. Again, we need to move it one, two place values. Since there's no place value here, we have to add in a zero. So we get 0 0.045 for the decimal. A lot of people get confused when they see a decimal in the percent and think that it's already converted to a decimal. Percents can contain decimals. They can contain fractions. I could write this as 4.5% and it would still mean the same thing. So when you're converting the percent, it's getting rid of the percent sign as part of it. And when you do that, you have to divide it by 100. So here we have 132%. 132 divided by 100. The decimal point is here. I go over one, two place values. This makes it 1.32. And that's my answer for that one. Now we're going to go from the decimal to a percent, backwards there. When you go 
from the decimal to percent, instead of dividing by 100, you're going to multiply by 100. And then you're going to add the percent sign in. So here, to multiply this by 100, I'd be moving the dust point over one, two places to the right instead of to the left. When you multiply by 100, it goes to the right. So this becomes 42%. Don't forget to put the percent sign on it. That is part of converting from the decimal to the percent. If it doesn't have the percent sign on there, it's not a percent. Right, here I've got 1.85. I multiply that by 100. It goes over one, two decimal places, and I get 185%. Two decimal places over. I've got to multiply by 100. Here I've got 0.6 repeating. Well, that's actually going to be 0 0.666666, so on like that. So when I multiply this by 100, I'm going to be moving over one, two decimal places like this, which is going to give me 66.6666 repeating. And I can write that as 66.6 repeating percent. Or, as I've said many times, in my classroom, you need to show at least two decimal places. So this would be acceptable, or 6 point, sorry, 66 0.67% would be an acceptable rounded value. So unless you're specifically told where to round to, you need to show two decimal places, and that's how you do it. Never round to the nearest whole number unless you're specifically told to do so. Now we're going to go from decimal to fraction. To convert from a decimal to a fraction, you count the number of decimal places. And that's going to be equal to the number of zeros after the number 1 in the denominator. Then you're going to drop the decimal point and make it the numerator. So whatever number it is, you drop the decimal point, that number becomes your numerator. And you simplify the resulting fraction. So here we have 0.25. That is 1, 2 decimal places. I don't count the whole numbers here. I just count the numbers after the, zero, uh, after the decimal point. If there was a zero here, which is the one down here, we'll see that in a second. But when you, I got two decimal places, which means I need to have this as over one with two zeros. The top becomes, drop the decimal, we have two five. I don't need the leading zero on that, so I have just two five. Then I need to reduce. Now I see a 5 and a 0. Whenever you see a number ending a 5 and a number ending a 0 over each other like this, you know they have a common factor of 5. So I divide them both by 5, and I'm going to get 5 over 20. Again, 5 and 0, so I divide by 5 again, and I'm going to get 1 over 4. 0.25 is 1 fourth as a fraction. Not surprising, 25 cents. 0.25 is a quarter. 0 0.08. There are two decimal places here. This counts as two. Don't count this as one simply because this is a zero. You need to count that zero. You don't count this one, but you do count this one. So you have two decimal places, which means you're going to have it over 100. And there's number eight. When you drop the decimal point here, you can drop that zero, and you're left with eight over 100. Both of those are divisible by 4, so I end up getting 2 over 25. And that's my final fraction there. Now, when you've got a repeating decimal and you've got to convert that to a fraction, the process is just a little different. You count the number of repeating, re, uh, count the number of repeating place values, and that's going to equal the number of nines in the denominator. No 1 in the denominator, only 9s. So you drop the decimal point from the number just like you did in the other part there and make it the numerator, and you simplify just like you did before. The only difference here is we're using nines instead of zeros. So here we have one place value repeating. I don't care if they write this like this. The eight's the only thing repeating. It's one number eight that's repeating. So we're going to have one nine on the bottom. We take this, we get rid of the decimal point. Now we put it on top. Eight ninths. 
8 ninths is 0.8 repeating. To check it, go to your calculator, you take the top number divided by the bottom number, and you'll get 0.8888 on your calculator there. It doesn't hurt to double check these just to make sure. Here we got 0.12 repeating, so there's two place values repeating, which means my fraction is going to have two nines on the bottom. And on top, I'm going to have this number without the repeating bar, without the decimal, I'm just going to have it as a 12 on top. Both of those are divisible by 3, so I get 4 over 33 when I reduce it. And that's my final answer. All right, fractions to ratios. When you simplify, when you, when you go converting from a fraction to a ratio, the first thing you, do, you need to do is simplify the fraction. Then you replace the fraction bar with a colon. So simplifying this, I divide both by 5, I get 1 over 4. And then I replace this fraction bar with a colon. Top number in front, bottom number second. 1 colon 4. Now, when you go on to learn more about ratios, you'll find that it's not always going to convert directly like this when you're talking about certain situations. But when you're, when you're asked to convert a fraction to a ratio directly like this with no other information, that's the way you do it. Here we have 3 fourths. So we're just going to, we don't need to reduce this at all. It's just going to be 3 colon 4. And that's our final answer in those two situations. Now it's time for you to try. So I want you, in your notes, I want you to make a copy of this table, pausing the video, and then filling out the table. I can give you a little bit of help here at the beginning. You're going to have to use different methods to go back and forth. Find the easiest one to convert first, and then you'll see that you'll have easier ways to work it from there. So pause the video, copy this, fill in the blanks. Welcome back. Point three, the easiest conversion for a decimal, repeating decimal, is to convert to a percent. So I'm going to move, multiply it by 100, and that's going to give me 33.3 repeating percent. After that, I, this doesn't really help me much with the others, but then I see this, and I'm going to go, well, the repeating decimal part, when it comes to fraction, is over 1 9, because it's one place value repeating, so it's 1 9 on the bottom, and the 3 goes on the top. That can be simplified. Both of them are divided by 3, and you get 1 third for your answer in there. Converting the fraction to the ratio is simply replacing the fraction bar with a colon. All right, percent. This time we're given the percent. To convert the percent to a decimal, I simply move the decimal point to the left two places, and I get 0 0.19. To convert that to a fraction, I have two decimal places, so I'm going to get rid of the decimal, put it on top of one with two zeros, and then reduce. Well, I can't be reduced, so it stays that way. Convert from the fraction to the ratio, it's 19 colon 100, top colon bottom. Here we're given three-fifths. The easiest thing to convert there is from three-fifths to, to the ratio of just three colon five, replacing the fraction bar with the colon. Then comes the decimal, three divided by five. You plug that into your calculator, and you get 0 0.6. To convert that to the percent, you multiply by 100, moving the decimal point two places to the right, and you get 60%. Here we have one to eight. The ratio. The easiest conversion there is to a fraction. Once you've got the fraction, to get the fraction to the decimal, we said we divide the top by the bottom. In your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.125. Convert the decimal to a percent by multiplying by 100. You get 12.5%. We'll be working on this in class tomorrow. Good luck. See you then.